Now on the bench today we've got uh, a 5G router, it's the Huawei uh, CPE H112-370. It's been out a few years but it is a very capable router. Now this particular one is unlocked and uh, what I want to do today and want to show you as well is how I'm going to modify all the internal antennas and bring them out so you can add external antennas and I'm talking about the Wi-Fi antennas, the uh, 4G antennas and the 5G antennas. Now why would you do this? And uh, that's a good question and unless you're lucky enough to have your local 5G mast uh, directly outside your house, um, the average speed for uh, the internal antennas, you're probably looking at around 60, uh, maybe a little bit lower than that, up to about 70 uh, megabits per second. So this is going to be a big improvement. So if we can add the external antennas, first of all, you could have directional antennas still in your home, still quite close to your router. They will probably up those speeds to around 130 megabits a second. Uh, next thing is to have something like a window antenna. And if you get that directional antenna somewhere pointing towards your 5G router, you could probably up that into the uh, high, um, well, around 180 to say 210. The next upgrade would be to have directional antennas in your loft, let's say, in your roof space. Um, you could probably increase it to around uh, 300 megabits a second by doing that. But although if you've got solar panels on your roof and they're blocking, that's something to take into consideration. And then finally, you can have one externally on the side of your house. Um, then sky's the limit. You can get anywhere between 400, 500 megabits per second. So you can see why an improvement like this is definitely worth doing, um, you know, to have external antennas, even if you're still keeping them quite close uh, to the router itself because on the inside of this they're all omnidirectional and if you know where your tower is then uh, directional antennas are certainly going to improve your speed. So to start off we need to get to the Phillips screw so we can dismantle this removing this case away. So we're going to pop this top cover off. like so and that exposes two Phillips screws here and here and then flip it over onto its base and we've got to remove these rubber feet that are held on with some double sided tape I don't want to damage the rubber there's one screw And there's the second one, and it's covered with uh, a little, uh, well, a little white sticker there to make sure you don't tamper with it. So very nice to see that. It shows that nobody's ever been into this router before, which is always a good sign. So once we've got all those uh, screws removed, we want to uh, clip this base off here so I'm just squeezing the sides get a little bit of room to get my spudger in and very gently pop it out don't use a screwdriver for this because you will null the sides and it doesn't look nice That's the base off. And now we've got four Phillips head screws to remove from the base. And of course, once you've got all the screws out, it just slips out and exposes all that RF goodness. So now we've just got to work out which antennas are which. Now, taking a look at the uh, internals, it might look a little bit uh, confusing, but it's nice. It's pretty straightforward 
in design. So let's start off with the 5G uh, frequencies first, or the 5G antennas first. We've got uh, two antennas here. I know it looks like one, but it's two antennas, and they're crossing over each other. And then on the back, we've got uh, another uh, 5G antenna here, and again, that's two crossing over. So that's um, four connections that we need to modify for the uh, 5G. Now, for the uh, 4G, we've got the higher frequencies of the 4G, the faster speeds of the 4G here and here. These are the two antennas. Um, they're going to be for around the uh, 2.7 gigahertz frequencies. Here on the back, we've got the lower frequency 4G antennas. They're, they're for around uh, 2.1 gigahertz, let's say, down to around uh, 1800 megahertz. And then uh, you've got um, the, also the much lower frequencies below 1 gigahertz. That's what these two antennas here are taking care of. So that's pretty straightforward and easy to figure out. The thing that I'm not sure about yet and uh, why I'm going to take all uh, this plastic off so I can uh, trace the signal paths back to the chips, etc. And possibly take a closer look at these antennas as well is we've got the Wi-Fi antennas here and here. Now, this has uh, two connections for the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and two connections for the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And I want to separate those out because if you're going to do this mod for the, um, you know, the cellular antennas so you can get some external antennas connected to those, you also want to do the mod for the uh, Wi-Fi as well. So, you know, you can uh, have a directional antenna inside your home um, get that signal where you want it in your home and not just have to pull up with a poor signal in certain areas. You want to, you know, the entire um, meaning of doing a modification like this is for you to take control and to make um, all those RF signals work for you, not work around those signals. So I want to uh, decide which ones of these cables are the 2.4 and which ones are the 5 gigahertz at the moment that's uh, not so obvious so that's what i'm going to be doing next removing all this stuff and then tracing it back so we can uh, work that out now in the end i did not remove uh, the heat sinks to uh, trace back the signal path down to the specific chips that uh, you know we could google and then find out which ones are for the 2.4 gigahertz and which ones are the 5 gigahertz i used my spectrum analyzer and just disconnected the coaxes and by a process of elimination, uh, the white coax here, that's going to the letter W on this side of the board, that is 2.4 gigahertz. The black coax going to the letter B, that is 5 gigahertz. And on the opposite side here, the uh, red coax going to the letter R on this board is 2.4 gigahertz. And the grey coax going to the letter G is 5 gigahertz. So now we can separate those two signals out and then we can use specific antennas for those frequencies rather than using uh, dual band antennas, which is going to give us a lot better signal propagation, especially in modern homes. So as you can see, I've connected all the new uh, cables. I'll put links into these cables uh, down below in the description. So uh, you don't have to buy the same ones from Amazon through the link, but it will give you an idea of what you need to order in order to do this modification. Now, I'm at a stage now where I'm going to have to start modifying the case to fit all these SMA cables through so we can connect new antennas to them. Um, now, when it comes to design, all humans like symmetry. If you don't get things nice and straight and lined up, it will bug you, it will look a mess, and it'll just look out of place. So, I've just got some pegboard here. This is a 4mm pegboard. Uh, and I'm going to use them as um, a jig template, if you will, um, for my drill holes for these cables. All the um, cellular connections there, the 5G and the 4G, uh, are going to be grouped on the side here. Probably in this area here, because I've got a nice void in order to give me some space to connect all the SMAs through. Uh, the Wi-Fi ones for the 5G and 2.4, uh, sorry, the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz, I'm still thinking about where to put them. I think I'm going to have them at the top. I don't really want to come through this top here. I want to keep uh, this uh, top piece here nice and clean. I don't want to drill through that. 
so i'm thinking of coming out on the sides here um like so so you can connect some uh, decent high gain omnidirectional antennas to those uh, but again i'll be using uh, this pegboard uh, probably spaced out drill through that one leave that one drill through that one so they're nicely spaced out evenly on either side um as for anything else apart from drilling the holes i think i'm going to remove this piece of plastic away from here to give me some more room so i can drop it down to about that there to give me some room and that'll give you plenty of space on the side to connect all the coaxial cables up to all the uh, external antennas so at the moment i'm just looking at it and playing it out in my mind trying to think of any problems that i might have um, i'm really impressed with the uh, strain relief on these uh, pigtails that's built onto the pcb board the only ones that uh, have to be careful of they've got no real strain relief are the 5g connections here the four 5g connections they don't have any strain relief um built into them on the pcb board like these have but uh, yeah that's where i'm at so i'm probably going to be drilling when i've spent a bit more time thinking about it and uh, planning it out in my head if you will so that's all the uh, holes drilled i've got the uh, two wi-fi 5 gigahertz 2.4 gigahertz here i've got uh, all eight of the uh, 5g and the 4g and the 4g lte at the side there and the uh, Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz on this side. I think that's going to look a lot better when it's all put together. So now I've got everything labelled up on these coaxes. I've just got to feed them through the holes. And uh, for that, I've got these long needle nose pliers. So a little bit of uh, finessing and uh, we're near the end of this build, I think. So there you have it, a full antenna mod of this uh, 5G router i mean uh, if you want to achieve the speeds that uh, the manufacturers claim is is um, capable of one of these then external antennas are the only way to go you can't really do it with the internal antennas unless you live underneath a uh, 5g mast but uh, i mean um, even if you use indoor directional antennas you're going to achieve much faster speeds than you ever could with the internals you know and then if you upgrade to say a, a window antenna that's going to improve things even further and then the next stage is to uh, stick uh, directional antennas in your roof space and then you know if that doesn't do the trick then uh, outside of your home but uh, yeah a standard like this with internal antennas you'll never reach the speed that uh, is uh, capable for one of these units unless you do this kind of uh, modification and another thing uh, i'm not sure if i mentioned it during the video but uh, for the uh, cellular connections here with the smas we're, we're using uh, smas for those for the uh, wi-fi connections you want to use rp smas it's just that 90 percent of the wi-fi antennas are rp and 90 percent of the cellular antennas tend to be uh, sma so that's what i've done there uh, rp sma for the uh, wi-fi ones and sma for the cellular connections so i'm going to be getting a few of these in and uh, putting uh, videos out there from time to time i've got my eye on another 5g router to uh, pick up and uh, modify uh, so i can show you here on the channel it is a fiddly job but it's not a difficult job and really taking the time to you know get all your holes lined up properly it really <sighs> it adds to the build i mean if you take your time with something like this just on those uh, little things as well it, it just makes for a lot of a uh, nicer unit and as i said during the build as well if you're going to do this you may as well do the wi-fi ones as well i mean on the 2.4 gigahertz here you can stick one directional antenna on there and keep an omnidirectional on let's say same with the five gigahertz wi-fi just to get better coverage in your home because not everybody's home is exactly the same i mean not everybody lives in a an exact size box let's say and to be honest with you using uh, external antennas really is the way to go especially with the higher speeds that we get now with the uh, 4g high frequencies around 2.7 uh, gigahertz and then you've got the 5g 3.3 uh, gigahertz and 3.6 gigahertz once you get uh, into uh, you know past the uh, normal standard 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi 
penetration uh, of those signals becomes very very difficult with those higher frequencies and you know that's why really directional antennas external antennas is the only way to go if you want to uh, achieve fast speeds with uh, one of these units so if you did enjoy the video please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions i'll do my best to answer them but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this external modification video and as i say there'll be a few more in the future with uh, other manufacturers and uh, yeah if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one